Hey guys, Q here. So, I just rolled out of bed like 15 minutes ago, and uh, this is this will be fun because it's I'm not really put together, but that's not really the point of this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The point of it is that I have something I have to say, and I don't know how many of you can relate to this. But, you know, everybody has a life, and everybody lives their life in a specific way based completely on the decisions that they make, and sometimes on the decisions of the... Mm, sometimes the decisions that people around them make. And with that being said, it's like... You guys might not have this problem. I mean, I don't know. But everybody always calls me eccentric. And that's not a bad thing, you know. I love eccentric people. I love how creative they can be and how outgoing they can be, how quiet they can be. Um, sometimes they're unpredictable. They're just, they're a great group of people. So don't get me wrong here. But I hate it when they misuse the word eccentric, and they are completely misusing it with me. And, you know, they they confuse, you know, creative with the word eccentric. And then there's also how I am called, you know, they call me weird and crazy and I'm not you know actually they, they base this sort of on what's happened in my life I have been pretty normal though although you know normal isn't really a mold you know it's what you make it normal is exactly what you make it it is up to you to create your own definition of normal because if you base yourself on society's normal, you're going to lose yourself completely in this whirlwind of emotion and confusion and you'll end up hurting yourself because you're trying to be what society wants you to be because you've fallen into the preconceived notion of... existing within society's form of normal. Also, um, <clears throat> back to the point though, is I've lived in about six different states in the U.S. and I've been to 21. And instead of looking at that as, oh my god, I moved so much, I look at that as, you know, I want to see all 50 states anyways, so... That's a great start. It's a great start. Um, although it's funny because, you know, out of all of that, I've always wanted to go to Canada. And we lived in areas where Canada was only like a couple hours away. And we just never went. Never went. But um, I've lived in all those states. And I've been to all those states. And... That means that I haven't had a consistent amount of friends. You know, I haven't grown up with the same people. But I'm cool with that because I have met some pretty crazy, awesome, fantastic people on the road. And I think that, you know, I was supposed to meet some of these people because I've kept some of them in my life. And they have ended up being true friends even though we're all like a thousand miles away from each other. But it's nice to have, like, the, the verbal support and having him there to just be my friend to help me out. And, you know, it's a vice versa type of thing. They're always telling me how great of a friend I am, although I don't... I, I don't know. Um, there's also the fact that... Um, well, there's emotional damage, and I'm not going to go into it too much, but, uh, you know... You take that kind of thing, it's been about five, six years, five, and you can either let it consume you and control you, and you can let the people in the situation do the exact same thing, or you can move along from it. And that is exactly what I'm trying to do, is move along from it. But all in the while of it, I am still in the 
closure stages. I'm still trying to figure out why. You know, this is the question I keep asking why, and I can't seem to get a good answer, but for the most part, it's pretty much behind me. And it's crappy, it sucks, but it happens. But still, based on everything, I'm still normal. Again, create your own definition of normal. It's exactly what I have done and exactly what you need to do. Be original. Be you. Be a snowflake, not a cookie cutout of who you are, of what people want you to be. You know, you have to differentiate between the two. And my definition of normal is when I was a kid, despite all these things when I was a kid, I too watched like the Smurfs on Boomerang and I ate Lucky Charms in my pajamas and when I was a preteen I was over emotional about every little thing and I know that if you're a preteen and you're watching this you're gonna hate me but it's the truth it really is it's just how it is and you know as a teenager it carries on you're still emotional and you know I've got about five six months left until I turn into an adult and it is just things improve and they change and you know if you're 13 or 14 or maybe even just 17 or you're 12 and you're watching this I just I want you guys to go ahead and just completely forget society as for what it is and I want you to go ahead and I want you to form your own opinions of yourselves make a chart if you have to because what I did is I followed society and I almost got caught in this windmill of what people consider acceptable and you know what's acceptable for people my age is you know drinking and drugs and sex and I mean that's not acceptable to every teenager but half of the ones that I know and maybe I don't know the right group of people I don't know don't know but it just seems like we caught in that thin is beautiful and that if you smoke you'll be popular and these things are wrong because if you think you're going to be thin you're going to start ser start starving yourself even if you are already thin and that's not good and then you're consumed by this eating disorder and you and, and, and if you think that, you know, you have to be, wear like 10 pounds of makeup or smoke cigarettes or you don't. Because everybody is beautiful in their own way. And if you smoke cigarettes, you're probably going to get like lung cancer or you're going to get really sick. And nobody needs that. Not you, not your family, not your friends, nobody. So whoever is watching this, I want you to know that you are beautiful and that no matter what happens in your life if you look at it in an outline and if you make your own definition you're gonna find that you know you're not as weird or as much of a freak as everybody is trying to paint you as and I want you guys to know that uh, even that you know I've been through it too I've You know, I've been bullied, I've been, I've starved myself before, I have just done some pretty terrible things to myself that I kind of hate to this very day. Not regret though, because I can't really regret it because at one point in my life I wanted it. So just know that you are you. I'm not going to go Dr. Seuss on you here, but you are you, and you know that that's, you need to stay you, because, yeah, I'm going to go Dr. Seuss on you. There's nobody who's any more you than yourself, and I just, 
don't want you guys to lose the self, lose yourself of that because it's terrible when we try to become somebody else. And then one day we look in the mirror and it's like, who is this person? I don't, I don't even recognize who this is. Is this me? So yeah, this video is brimming on about 11 minutes of a rant that was originally supposed to start out about my life. And it ended up being some advice that I've given you guys. And I hope that you take this advice and that you use it. Because, you know, people do care about you. And before you flag this video for what I'm wearing, it's a cami. It's not my bra straps. So, but yes. Um, you guys are loved and you guys are cared about. And... I just want you guys to know that you are important to somebody in your life, and if you f aren't feeling that you are, or you know somebody who isn't feeling that they are, then stop, because it's true. It's very, very true. I mean, look at me. I've made this video, and I turned it into, you know, advice for you guys, because I care. I obviously care so much. So, yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, and remember, just be true to you. Toodaloo. <laughs>